This is my pal Craig Thatcher, a great, great guitar player and Martin clinician. He's going to give us a little sample on this beautiful 1932-018 tenor. That song sounds great. Hi, I'm Dan Earlywine and we're in my shop on a Friday morning with Dick Boak from the Martin Guitar Company and Mike McGovern who heads the tech support at Stumac Phone Line. Let's hear about the tenor guitar, Dick. They're beautiful things. <laughs> uh, the reason for tenor guitars was really because the banjo players, uh, uh, the banjo produced such a, a brash, harsh sound that uh, uh, the uh, tenor guitar became popular because it, it gave uh, the tenor and plectrum players a softer, more guitar-like sound uh, in a tenor format. So these are size five. This is one of the smaller sizes that Martin made with a 14 fret neck. And these were uh, pretty popular, especially with uh, string bands and marching bands uh, that were playing uh, a banjo like the Mummers in Philadelphia. Uh, they could uh, play similar to the tenor banjo on the little guitars. Um, gradually though, the, the uh, the tenor at Martin was redesigned, this in 1932, as a matter of fact, this is an O18T, and uh, I think these were started around 1929. Now the, the, the mahogany top is, is spruce, this is Adirondack spruce, and Martin felt that the wide grain should always go in, in the middle, C.F. Martin III always talked about that. Mm. The wide grain, he felt, produced a better tone when, when put in the middle of the guitar, and I think um, the uh, vibrations are a little more with wider grain. The, the tight grain on the edges was stiffer. Um, and we found more recently that the stiff grain is great on rosewood guitars and, and the wide grain is great on mahogany guitars. Uh, the wide grain tends to add uh, bass response to a mahogany guitar, which is typically treble, trebly. And conversely, the tight grain T tends to add treble response to a guitar made of rosewood that is typically bassy. What's it tuned to? It's tuned to uh, C, G, D, A. That's right. So here we've got the uh, planetary uh, banjo style tuners. Uh, these are Grover's, uh, right? Yeah, Grover patent. And um, stamp on the back of the headstock. Uh, these tuners would have appeared uh, starting around 1930 on orchestra models. They also started using a silk screened logo around 1930. This is the uh, very, very original first logo that Martin put on the face of the headstock on the head plate. And these were eventually replaced by uh, uh, a couple of different types of decals. And so here you can see the Brazilian rosewood end piece as well as the binding um, with the uh, uh, wood inlay. A uh, little scarf joint here, uh, where two pieces of Brazilian rosewood are joined. This uh, appears to be original. And of course, mahogany back and sides for extremely light weight and, and breathy tone. Is the scale length shorter? Is it braced the same? Let's measure it. Yeah. It is. Uh, Ten and three quarters, so, tw so it's 20, 23 and inch a scale. 23 and a 20, quarter? 23 inch scale. Roughly 23 and a quarter inch. 11 and a half to the 12th fret. Yeah. Over here, it's 10 and 5 eighths. That's a 14 fret. This is a 12 fret to the bottom. 10 and 5 eighths double so that's, would be. It's 21 and a. Uh, 21 and a hair. Right in there. 21 and yeah. a half. And, you know, the shorter scale uh, uh, actually lends itself to a higher pitch. Of oh, tuning. interesting. Because if you, if you tune to standard pitch, uh, on a short scale instrument, uh, it's going to be very. The strings are going to be very floppy, and and as you lengthen the scale, you're you're actually tightening the string and giving more projection to the sound. So this, I believe, is a 23 inch scale, still quite short, and capable of of uh, being tuned to a higher pitch. Yeah. It wouldn't be fair to uh, ignore this. That, that <laughs> there were other other makers like uh, like Gibson making uh, their version of tenor guitars. And one of the interesting things that I noticed here is, is the, uh, the fingerboard, which, which uh, has this little point. And, and if you notice on Style 3 and Style 5 Martin ukuleles, they'll have this point, they'll have the, the uh, uh, pointed uh, ukulele headstock and also a little inlay down here. 
and we refer to this shape especially associated with the inlay at the bottom of the guitar but also this shape here which is a kind of a copy of that mm -hmm. uh, is taken from early Martin ukuleles wow. uh, around 1916 that Martin first started that and we it's it's called the, a pondologue a pondologue okay. which is uh, I don't even know if you'll find that uh, <laughs> on Google but it's a, a very obscure term that describes this shape and the corresponding inlay down at the bottom of the, of yeah. the ukulele. So this is a beautiful little, has that Gibson smell. The smell of a Gibson is yeah. different from the smell of a Martin. Yeah.